Hi friends, welcome to Aerotech Solutions. Let's continue our uh, our session with intro. Okay, so now I want to introduce my embedded system course. So basically, people have different choices in core domain. Again, uh, whenever you are trying to choose a career for embedded domain, so you have a again confusion after ECE or triple E branch completion of your graduation. So you have to choose a specific core domain. Again, there are different categories here. And first of all, what is electronic system? So any system right from calculated to industry level product, you will find the two combinations which are very clear hardware and software. I think you may heard the basic definition of embedded system, which is combination of hardware and software. Okay, so previous first of all, the combination of hardware and software which is electronic system and again this electronic system have different categories and any system you will take a simple calculator or ipod or consumer side or defense side or if you go with medical products any product you will touch you will find some inputs and some output for your product which means the system which is operated with the help of a different inputs like switches or sometimes it may operate with sensors and sometimes it may operate with card readers and sometimes it may operate with some wireless modems. So this is this is the kind of inputs you may find for your electronic unit again switches means it may be keypad or even keyboard. So like your laptops and all desktop computers which will come to. Uh, which, will, which will come to in your applications like if you are looking for output side so any system which will support for displays so means one display unit is mandatory for your system so again displays are different types you may find sometimes only indicators like LEDs suppose the system is running properly it may indicate green LED the system functioning is like in error stage it will show some orange color if system is damaged it will it will indicate with red color okay so sometimes it you may find as displays only indicators or sometimes it may text screens which are lcds mostly used in the products like medical products or any calculator or whatever you are working and sometimes you may find seven segments now products are getting with leds o leds so like this based on requirement people may choose one display unit compulsory okay so this maybe you can indicate with leds you can send some text to on screen or you may get some graphical lcds or you may get some videos tft screens so this this is the general display units they may use in products so not only display always suppose if you go for some uh, industrial side so as a outputs they may use electrical loads electrical loads like single phase motors three phase motors or any any kind of unit okay but you may find one single phase load or multiple single phase loads or three phase loads they are controlling with the help of your product and other than electrical loads if you go to robotic side they are using motors so again motors are DC, stepper, servo, these are different categories of motors present in the applications. So any, any product you are taking, like you will find some inputs and some outputs for your device or product and modems. So yeah, you can use these modems as input and as well as output because it, it allows to transmit data or receive data. Okay, so even your projects, like any project you are trying to implement or you are trying to work any product so which is a combination of any one of this input and any one of this output or multiple inputs and multiple outputs don't think system means computer so system means it is it is doing our functionality whatever engineer is deciding so that functionality which is going to perform so if you open the system or the motherboard of your product so you will find a lot of hardware components like ic's resistors capacitors inductors and all 
okay so means every single product or every small unit you will find some hardware components like active passive all all kinds of components you will find from your product board but behind that there is a program so behind that there is a software so and within that hardware so you need to focus on what programmable device and who is who is take care of our input provided from the input devices and working with my output devices so there is some intelligence you need to add with this system with the help of the programmable devices present in the market so based on that category they they segregated into different systems here so again you are finding the names in core domains embedded system vlsi system dsp system and automation system and as per this a simple equation hardware and software so there you are saying that it is a electronic system but again the system comes under which domain whether it is a embedded system or it is a vlsi system or it is a dsp system or it is a automation so that purely decided by the hardware which means see uh, you will find the common components for every product like resistors capacitors but other than this you need to notice there is a one intelligent device that will decide your domain so here in embedded system category as hardware part you need to focus on the intelligent device for every system not only uh, your computer so any any electronic unit it will maintain one intelligent system intelligent device compulsory so why i am saying this is the intelligent device because this is the only device which will accept engineer commands engineer instructions see i cannot say resistor uh, after sensing this stop the motor or start the motor so i can say my words in in your hardware for only the one and only device which is intelligent device so what are the intelligent devices in electronics so for us you have a different choices there are processors in market as called as intelligent devices and there are controllers in market and there are digital signal processors and fpga which is field programmable gate array and plcs so these these are the most popular programmable devices in electronic sector so based on this programmable devices you can design your system see the system which is not always designed with only processor the system which is not designed with always with controllers based on requirement again you have to choose your programmable devices every product is not going to maintain always processor maybe you may find plc there maybe you may find fpga sometime you may find digital signal processors or you may find controllers or you may find processors so based on the category of these intelligent devices so you are calling this system with a different name so when i can call your product which is comes under embedded so as hardware again hardware means you need to focus on the intelligent device or programmable device so in my system you are having processors or controllers as intelligent devices so for these intelligent devices you need to talk in a specific language i cannot communicate with the processor with any language no i so your processor doesn't heard telugu english urdu or tamil or whatever it is so it 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 works with a specific language so as our academic will cover the fundamental programming language about your process and controllers which are assembly language like move add sub anl so these these are the different op op opera op op sorry so these are the different instructions they are you are going to use for your processors and controllers in our academic level but this language which is a very old programming language for your processors and controllers and so this assembly language you will you will get in stage of compilation so generally your what you feel the assembly language is a very old language but every program finally you have to convert into assembly whatever you 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 written the program in c or c++ so this will convert it into low level programming language which is only assembly so then it is converted into mission understandable format 
so there is a reason still this assembly language you should be aware but not no, no need to learn clearly because compiler will take care of converting your high level language program it may be c c++ python program which will automatically convert it into equivalent of assembly language program so this is a very low level programming language for your processors and controllers but now you are dealing with c or c++ to this processors and controllers whatever the system you are doing with this combination with assembly language or c or c++ this application or this system which is comes under the example of embedded system see how can you say that washing machine is the example of embedded product or mobile is the example of embedded product so in backend so there is a intelligent device as processor or controller and further they are using programming languages c or c++ to develop the complete software so this is how but peripherals are your choice you can you can take any sensor or motor or display whatever you want you can take it but inside you need to focus on what intelligent device they are using for your application and what programming language they are using to develop your software that that combination will name for your domain and when this product or when the system comes under vlsi system so this vlsi system which is developed with the combination of programmable device fpga and language verilog or vhdl so these are the two popular programming languages for us whenever you are dealing with vlsi domain so vlsi domain whenever you are entering into vlsi domain you need to focus on the intelligent device fpga in which stands field programmable gate array and the language verilog or vhdl again you have two choices here you can proceed with verilog language or vhdl language whatever the system you are doing with this combination it purely comes under vlsi category and whenever you are trying to do dsp system so you need to focus on the programmable device digital signal processor with the language matlab so this will make you the combination for your system with dsp processor with matlab programming language so always for every system you need to focus on what programmable device you are trying to use and what programming language you are you are working and the automation sector which is purely works on plc and plc used different languages like ladder logics or code blocks so this P automation sector which purely works on plc plc full form is programmable logic controllers and its language is ladder logic see by learning matlab i cannot deal with plc by learning c language i cannot deal with fpga so if you are trying to become embedded resource or embedded engineer then focus on these combinations whatever the depth skills see i think you may heard all the terminology for processors and controllers from academic but you need to extend your knowledge towards processors and towards controllers again processors have different generations right from 4 bit to 64 bit so 4 bit processor 16 bit processor 8 bit processor 32 bit processor 64 bit processor that will make so much of difference for the industry so based on that only your packages are going to decide not in terms of age not in terms of only experience okay so if you have the knowledge with different generations of processors the companies are offering very good packages and again language so if you have a mindset i am strong in hardware or i am strong in only programming so you are not suited for core domains you need to balance your skills on hardware as well programming so because it it is itself it is the standard equation hardware and software if you are focusing on only programming or you are focusing on only hardware your growth will be low if you focus only on one set so if you are focusing on both combinations you are very you will become very strong person in the specific domain and vlsi also have the both fpga device 
and Verilog or VHDL language. So again, this this is having two categories: verification engineers and physical design engineers. So Verilog will goes for verification side, and VHDL is goes for physical design. So you need to focus. So these two different programming languages for very VLSI domain and devices FPGA. And for DSP domain, you need to focus on MATLAB programming with very strong knowledge with DSP processors. And the area of applications for DSP domain like image processing, voice processing, speech processing in all categories like digital cams, all cameras which are made up with this DSP processors with MATLAB combination. And then automation sector which purely deals with PLC and ladder logic. So this, this will in the, the areas of PLCs which are cement industries, pharma industries, seed industries which are purely works with this PLC and ladder logic combination. This is how you are, you are able to decide what domain you will fit and what are the skill set you need to update for specific areas. You want to become embedded engineer, go with a strong combination processors and controllers with C, C++ programming skills. And you want to become DSP person, then go with the combination digital signal processors and MATLAB resource. And for VLSI area, FPGA and Verilog VHDI. This is how you can, you can manage your areas. Now you are entering into the specific stream. So this stream, you are trying to give the sessions. And now you need to focus on what is your strength on knowledge of processors and what is your knowledge on controllers and what is your knowledge on C language and C++. So that you need to test yourself and based on that you need to take so action to develop your skills. And I will give the simple processor approach in your systems. So basic processor is very simple, the processor functioning is very clear, it, it will deal with only binary inputs and provides binary outputs, which means it, which is allowing only inputs in the form of ones and zeros and providing outputs also in the form of ones and zeros. And who introduced these processors for us, which is introduced by Intel Corporation in 1972. The first processor from Intel organization with a capacity of 4 bits. See, always processors are measured with bit capacity. So why you need to focus on this bit, bit capacity of processors always? The processor which will works on only binary bits, which is zeros and ones, even your computer is upgraded. So you, you are going for next generation of processors. If you have 32 bit now, and you are moving for 64 bit and you have 16 bit you are moving to 32 bit. So if the bit capacity of processor is increased then the overall system functionality will be going to fast because the accessing input which is which is becoming more for us if it is a 4 bit which means clearly it accepts only 4 binary inputs at a time. And again it is going to provide only 4 binary outputs for us at a time. So that, that will make so much of difference whenever you are knowing the capacity of processors. And Intel is doing research every time and they are releasing new generation of processors for every 2 to 3 years and which is introduced in 1970s and later they introduced 8 bit processors which are 8085, 80 and 4 bit processor series is 4001 and 8 bit processor series is 8085. So which is coming with our academic actually and whereas 16 bit processors in market which are 80186 to 863 series and even there are 32 bit processors for us which are Pentium version processors which are named as P1, P2, P3, P4 processors and even there are 64 bit processors in market like i series processors. So every processor is measured with bit capacity always. The meaning is very clear. It accepts how many binary inputs allowing at a time. And once you are taking processor for your system, which means you decided 
you want to do one project or you want to do one product with the processor so the behavior of processor is very simple it accepts binary inputs and provides binary outputs then how to do my application like i am trying to connect one sensor i am trying to connect one display so anyway application means it is a combination of inputs and outputs if you are trying to connect input with your processor it won't allow to connect directly because your processor is not supporting any input output ports so if you are trying to design your system with processor you need to know about the external devices which are ppis the full form of ppi is programmable peripheral interface so this programmable peripheral interface which provides input output ports for us so by using this input output ports you can connect something with your processor again your ppi will take care of taking the input and converting to zeros and ones and again so you need external memory support so without connecting memory your program is not going to say because processor don't support any memory on chip so you need to connect external memory so this scenario you can easily find out on computer motherboard or laptop motherboard so your computer is processor centric system means processor is the intelligent device for your processor for your computer laptop or desktop so once you watch the motherboard around processor they are using so many additional components the importance of those additional components is very clear so if you give any input from keyboard your processor is not taking directly it is using some additional chip for that which is chipset so that additional chip will take care of taking input from keyboard and converting to zeros and ones again your processor is doing certain action on applied input whatever your operating system so your operating system once again where it is saved which is saved in your hard disk see without having any external memory for your processor based systems your application won't work okay or else you need to reprogram every time once you switch on you need to execute the operating system lines see once you switch on your computer it takes some time to boot that boot means which is taking operating system instructions and which is installing or which is executing all the driver programs related to keyboard the driver program related to mouse the driver program related to audio video or wifi or bluetooth whatever the existence features on your laptop which is allowed to execute on your operating system 